Hi everyone, in this video course I'm going to show you how to create black and white high contrast drawings in Rhino 8 where we'll modify the display style settings so that we can get these types of drawings that you see here. These are great for diagrams, for massing representation, for details, elevations, anything that you want to represent the drawings in this like high contrast black and white aesthetic. So I'll, let me just quickly cycle through here so you can see some quick examples and then I'll show you how to actually do it in Rhino. So views like this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in options. And then you're going to go down and to your view and you're going to click on display modes. And then you're going to make a copy of your rendered, right? Just make a copy. And I'm going to call this diagram BW black and white. I already made settings again, so I'm going to just cycle through it, but you want to click OK. You're going to go right here and then activate it. Right click on it and activate diagram BW. So then type in options again. And then we're going to go to your display style. It should be in alphabetical order. So right here, right? And we're going to modify some settings here. So the first thing that we're going to do is I want the background to be a solid color and I want it to be white, okay? Ground play settings, I want it to be custom, okay? And you can just click down here to change these things. And you want shadow only on there. You can have the ground plane on if you want to, if you don't want to put in your own ground, ground plane. Uh, for shade settings, you want to do shade objects, okay? Now for sh the actual color, you want to do objects color and objects color for both back face and the color usage over here, okay? Now, when it comes to visibility, it's really up to you, but I only just want to show my surface edges and curves if you want to show off maybe like dash lines or extension lines. Uh, these things here are optional if you want to. Now for lighting scheme, it's very important, okay? I want the lighting method to be scene lighting and I want the ambient color to be black, all right? Now going down to the objects, if I go to curves, I'm just going to make sure that all of my curves are black. So I use a single color for all objects. And it's a matter of preference if you want to do object width or if you want to do pixels. If you're in Rhino 7, I think you can just do pixels. If you do object width, then you're going to decide the size on the layer properties. Same thing with surfaces. I'm doing single color for all edges and I'm making it all black. And I'm using object width. Or you can just do pixels if you wanted to. Same thing for all these settings here. And for meshes as well, right? You can do single color, but you want to give it a thickness of one. You can't do objects with, so I give them all thickness of one. Now, what's really important is your shadows. So for your shadows, I have my video memory usage on maximum, skylight on maximum, and my self shadow artifacts on maximum. Okay, it's very important. If I go down here, I want my shadow color to be black, and my shadow intensity to be 100%. All right, it's super important that you have this. Shadows ignore user-defined clipping planes. That's important if you want if you want to activate your clipping plane, you want the shadows to go through the clipping plane, okay? And just to go back to your clipping planes real fast, it's really up to you if you want to make these black and white as well, like black poche or white poche, you will just modify these settings as well, okay? But these are basically all of the main settings that you want to activate to get the main the main display style and then you just click okay now what's really important to understand is that we're when we're doing use object color what that means is we're using the layer color so if you notice everything on here is basically black and white and what's really important to understand is that when we're doing a black and white aesthetic for rhino you actually don't want to use 100% black. You want to use 99%. So if you see here for my black, like for my lightness, it's like, if I pick black, it's like 18 or 99. You know what I'm saying? So you want it to be 1% less black, maximum. If you make it 100% black, it's actually going to turn to white. So it's very important to get. So like, for example, my walls right now, right? It's not 100% black. 
and we'll show what happens. You see how it turns white? So you want to make it just and then it'll it'll read it. So that's very important to get, okay? Okay, so if you go to your render settings, you want to have, you know, you want to do final quality. You actually want both your skylight and your sun on. And I'm and I'm saying use custom environment. I'm doing the studio lighting, okay? And the ambient light here is black. Let me just mark these down. So I have my sun activate, activated, I have my skylight activated, and I'm doing the use custom environment, okay? Now, for the intensity of the skylight, I don't have it that strong. It's around 0.35. And the reason for that is if I make it too strong, it's going to soften the shadows. It's going to make the shadows even lighter. I'm going for like this high contrast black and white drawing. So I want it, I want the shadows to be a little bit dark. Okay? So that's really important to understand. And you need the skylights to be on. You need them to be on for this one. In my other videos, you actually want to turn them off completely. But in this one, when you want to do black and white, high contrast, you need to have your skylight on. Now, for the sun settings, I'm doing manual control. And, you know, it's really up to you where you want to show your, your shadows. And that's basically about it in terms of the, the lighting and the shadows. You can increase your shadow quality up here, but this is really for like final render output. It isn't for the render display, okay? So that's really important. Now, the other thing that's really important to do is to do print display, okay? And what I do is my state is always on and my color is display and have a scale of one, all right? So that's very important. Now, I just wanna go back to the, the line weights. So remember in the settings, I said use objects width. So what that means is if you go here on your print width, that's what that means. So if you end up changing these line weights from default, the lines are gonna get thicker on the edges, for example. Okay, so that's really important to understand. And again, remember, use objects color. It means that it's gonna use your layer color. Even if you have materials, it's not gonna use your materials, it's gonna use your layer color. So you have two options when exporting these views. You can either do view capture to file or you can do print. So if you do view capture to file, I typically will first go to viewport and then I will do custom and then I will lock the viewport aspect to this viewport aspect and I'll actually upscale it by like two times. I have a 4K screen, so it's already big already. And then I'll actually upscale it even more by scaling up the factor by two. And then I just click okay and I save it as a PNG. I don't save it as a JPEG, I save it as a PNG. Right? And make sure not to have transparent background. Do not have to. So it should be like a solid white background. All right. So that's one option. And if you do control P for print, and I definitely do raster output and I do display color. Okay. If you scroll down here for match pattern definition and match viewport display, you want to make sure if you're modifying your line weights in your layer settings, like you're giving some things a thicker line weight, then you want to do match pattern definition. But if you're doing everything like hairline and default, and you like how it already looks on the screen as is, then do match viewport display. Okay. And then you scroll down and this is up to you what you want to show. And then you click okay. It takes a little bit longer to export from the print dialog, like if you printed a PDF or as a JPEG, it's faster on view capture to file. Majority of the times I personally do view capture to file. Unless I'm showing like dimension strings, then I'll do print. Okay. So it's really a preference. It's up to you. But yeah, that's about it. So let me again just cycle through the views. And at the end of this video, I'll just show you like final exports of how these look like when you like lay them out on a piece of paper. So when you're showing this type of like aesthetic style in a presentation, everything kind of has to read like it because it's kind of rigid and it's not, I would say, playful. It's kind of serious in a sense. So you want to make sure that it's super consistent in your graphic style if you're going to show a graphic style like this, okay? So again, I might just cycle through some like final exports with text and how I laid out in InDesign, but that's really about it. So if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe because I really want to help this channel grow. Thank you.